The fourth theory we'll look at is by Emile Durkheim, who died in 1917. Durkheim was a brilliant Frenchman. He was a pioneer in the field of sociology. Durkheim was a secular Jew. While he was the son of a Jewish rabbi, by his teenage years, he was an agnostic. He spent his career as a professor at the universities of Bordeaux and Paris. His most famous book is called The Elementary Forms of the Religious Life. According to Durkheim, religion is a social phenomenon. In that book, he says, quote, Religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Durkheim thinks that even the concept of an individual is a product of social reality. If you want to know the origins of religion, he argues, you shouldn't try to find out what happened in the distant past. Rather, you should examine what he calls universal human needs. And these universal human needs, he thinks, are easily observable in current-day primitive cultures. Durkheim says that religions always distinguish between the sacred and the profane. In fact, this is the defining mark of religious thought. Of course, he's not making the point that the sacred and the profane are recognized in the world. Rather, his idea is that people project them onto the world. Religion, he thought, is a complex social phenomenon, and it's best approached by looking at a simple or basic version of it. And he thought that the most simple or basic version of it could be found in primitive societies. He found the information he wanted in descriptive fieldwork done by some other contemporary anthropologists who had visited aboriginal tribes in Australia. These are what would today be called the indigenous peoples of Australia. And the term primitive is now considered very offensive. Don't shoot me, I'm just the messenger. It is plausible that those societies were, in recent times, ordered in the way that societies were all over the world, say, 10,000 years ago, or at least several thousand years ago. What Durkheim concludes is that the most foundational form of religion is what he calls totemism. In totemism, a community makes some non-human object, usually an animal, its symbol, and the community thinks of that animal as sacred and something that protects the community. So, you know, we're the people of the wolf. Typically, they will kill and eat other animals, but not the sacred animal. At least, not normally, not in everyday life. They might do it as a part of some special ritual. This totem is the focus of the clan's myths and rituals. As a sacred object, it's thought to possess some kind of special power. Or maybe there's a force that is represented by the totem and in some sense stands behind the totem. And the totem represents the clan or the tribe. And because the totem is sacred and it represents the clan and tribe, the clan is itself sacred. Thus Durkheim says that in worshipping this totem, they are really revering themselves as a community. What they think is that they're worshipping something external some deity or force or spirit. But what they're really worshiping is the clan. These groups practice frequent group rituals, which produce what he calls collective effervescence. That is, the experience of being swept away by the religious group. Basically, they get each other all excited. And this creates more and more intense experiences. And all of this is how the clan secures the loyalty of its members. Those religious rituals are really declarations of loyalty to the group. In some such groups, in a central ritual, they worship the totem, and then they eat that animal. It's as if they're giving life to their god, and it is giving life to them. And this analysis of totemism, Durkheim thinks, applies to all religion. Thus, in all cases, he thinks, the function of a religion is to provide a sense of social bonding and belonging and to make the religious community think of itself as sacred, holy, and divine. In this way of looking at religion, then, the rituals are going to be much more important than the beliefs or the doctrines. It's the rituals that really matter. The beliefs are incidental. What religion is, is a social practice which does these two things. That's what religion is. 
In his view, this is an adequate and also a wholly naturalistic explanation of religious phenomena. A standard criticism of Durkheim's theory is that it's reductionistic. In other words, it's over-simple. Sometimes people call this a case of nothing buttery. They're saying that religion is nothing more than a social practice that does those two things. Many would object that the social dimension of religion is just one dimension of religions and is not obviously the fundamental or the only one. Scholar Daniel Pauls says that for Durkheim, quote, social structure is always the reality, while religion is merely an appearance, end quote. But why can't religious beliefs, religious feelings, religious institutions play important causal roles in human history? Another concern that scholars have had about Durkheim's theory is that it relies too much on inaccurate data about aboriginal tribes and their religion. In our next segment, a look at the work of famous German scholar Max Weber.